In today's video, provision of joggle faceplate on AT weld, we are going to discuss. The provision of joggle faceplate based on the two factors. The first one is for the prevention and second one for the protection. Prevention is done on the good AT welds and protection is done on the defective AT welds. This can be categorized into the three parts. The first one is for the new AT weld, which cannot be categorized into the good AT weld or defective AT weld. Second category, good AT weld. The weld which don't have any defects in it. And third one is defective AT weld. So we can categorize the provision of joggle faceplate on the three categories we will study later. But before that, we are going to discuss the ways in which they can be protected. So the ways which can be used to be protect joggle faceplate on AT weld are first one is with clamps only, second with too far in bolts only, and third it may be either clamps or too far in bolts only. So let's discuss one by one. For the new AT weld, the weld which is done newly and it is not tested by the USFD, we don't know that weld is good or bad. So before testing of the weld by the USFD, it should be protected by the two clamps and supported wooden blocks till USFD tested. After testing of the USFD, if it is found good, the joggle face blade can be removed. The second one is good AT weld. So on good AT weld, where we can provide joggle face blade? The first one is those weld having 50% of a GMT life of rail spent. That should be protected with two far ends bolt only. Suppose I have a rail and this one is another rail which is welded here. Let's define this AT, uh, rail has 800 GMT and this AT weld has 800 GMT capacity. After passing 400 GMT, this weld should be protected. Does mean after passing 50% of the stipulated life of the rail, weld should be protected. Now second. On bank height 5 meter or more does mean the track which is laid on the banks and their height is 5 meter or more, all the weld should be protected with two clamps or two far end bolts. Here you have two options that these welds can be protected either by the clamps or two far end bolts. Now the third one is joggle face plate can be provided on curves that is three degree or sharper curves. These are good welds and that should be protected with either clamp or two far end bolt only. It may be protected by the clamps or two far end bolt. The fourth one is good AT weld can be protected on bridges having water wedge 100 meter or more. The weld should also be protected on the approaches and the approach should be taken 100 meter. This should be protected with clamp and or two far end bolt. 
one more where junction weld has been done all the junction welds should be protected with proper combination joggle face plates only now come to the defective welds ya crack welds or broken at welds all the defective at welds detected during the usf day testing must be protected with clamps or two far end bolts the usd usfd defect are imrw obsw dfwr dfwo or dfwn the next one is those weld which have been seen by the railway official during inspections and that is visually cracked at weld the weld which has been seen visually that there is a crack found so those weld should be protected by the joggle face plate now third one is fractured at weld when rail is fractured does mean ki weld at weld is fractured the fractured at weld should be protected by the joggled face plates 